All right, folks, so we've done a couple of sensitivity tests on the channel, and I was asked to do one on this G5SB from Radio Oddity. I think it's a Baofeng in Radio Oddity clothing, but I'm not entirely sure about that. Anyhow, we are going to do that today, and what we have to make this happen is a 40 dB 10 watt attenuator, but we really don't need it to be 10 watts. The important part is it's 40 dB. And so what that's going to do is that's going to reduce the signal that is created by our tiny SA by 40 dB. Um, now we're going to inject a signal from the tiny SA right here from this RF port. And it's going to go through this coaxial cable into the radio. When we want to set up the radio for this particular test, let me go ahead and turn it on. And we are in frequency mode and we're going to go into the menu. And the first thing that we're going to do is go into radio set. And the first thing that we have here is our squelch setting. And so we're going to, oh, let's go back in. And we are going to set our squelch to the lowest level off. All right, let me turn this volume down. And the reason we do that is because it's wide open and we want to be able to hear all of the signals. The other thing that we need to do is we need to go into radio set and we need to go down. Oh, that's not radio set. We get to go into radio set and then we want to go down and to bandwidth and I'm going to select that and we are already set to wide. So that means that our their channel is 25 kilohertz wide, which is exactly what we want. Now, what I'm going to do is to make this a little bit easier is I'm going to set this nano VNA up. I'm sorry, this tiny SA ultra so we can see it in the computer screen. So let me go ahead and set that up and we'll be right back. Okay, you should be able to see the tiny SA in the screen. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to activate the menu and then I am going to, everything's all finagled goofy around here. I gotta go down here and I pick mode. And then when I pick mode, I am going to pick the signal generator option, which is right there. And then here you can see some configuration options. And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna set my frequency. So I'm gonna click where it says set. And we are going to go with 146.520 megahertz. And you can see that, that we've now been changed to 14652 megahertz. The next thing that I want to do is I want to go down here and I want to take a look at this mod, MODS for modulation. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick FM modulation. And we're going to just generate a tone of 1,000 hertz or 1 kilohertz. Very typical thing to do. And our FM deviation is going to be 3 kilohertz. A very typical thing to do on these tests. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit back. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the signal strength. So an S9 signal, which is considered a strong signal, on UHF and VHF is negative 93 dBm. So we want to go ahead and we want to generate a signal at that level. Now the tiny SA is capable of generating the signal that low, but it generally starts to struggle when you get to around negative 110. And what we've seen in some of these tests is that these radios can pick up a signal all the way down to negative 140. So that's the reason we use this attenuator. So this attenuator gives us a little bit of wiggle room and then we only have to set our attenuation level on or our DBM level on the, the tiny SA at 53 plus the 40 gives us 93 below. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit this button that says external gain. And I'm going to say our external gain is negative 40 dB because that's what this attenuator does is negative 40. So you notice that we went from negative 18 to negative 58 in our level. So what I'm going to do is on this level, so I'm going to go ahead and hit set, and then I'm going to say negative 93. That's accounting for our attenuator. So make sure you get that right. And then also make sure you put negative 93, not positive 93, because injecting stronger signals into the front end of a radio can be catastrophic. So when we come back up, here we are. We have our signal at negative 93 dBm on 146.52 megahertz. And then we have our modulation turned on. So let me go ahead and turn the radio on, the volume up. So you should be able to hear that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the signal on. And you can hear the signal right there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to increment down until the radio stops hearing, essentially. And I can do that by clicking on the tiny SA and subtracting 10 dB. So now we're at negative 103, negative 113, 
negative 123. Now, negative 133, we're starting to struggle a little bit. You can hear some static in there, some noise, but you can still hear the tone. So we're going to say that this is still working. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to decrease by 1 dB until we don't hear the tone any longer. So we're at 137, and I can still hear it. 138, and I can still hear it. Barely hear it at 139. And I don't hear it at uh, 140. Now, that's pretty good. What we've seen in a lot of cases is that these stop working around 140, 141, 142. And I would say that, that this is in line with some of the other radios that we've tested. Let me go ahead and turn this off. And that's going to wrap up this video, folks. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to answer. Thanks.